maybe that did be so to begin with the pancreas is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland meaning it has got endocrine tissues and the exocrine tissues we must remember of course from our anatomy that an exocrine gland is a gland which secretes its product via a duct. So the liver, the, the, the pancreas has got the pancreas duct. It's going to secrete its product, digestive juices into the pancreas duct, and they will, from there they will go into the duodenum and then they will aid in the digestion of food, fat, whatever. And we also know that the, the pancreas is described as an organ with the head, body, and the tail. So this is the pancreas, and of course this is where the pyloric sphincter will be in our anatomy, and uh, we are going to have the duodenum from there, because it's going to direct its product into the duodenum, digestive juices, and then to head in the process of digestion. But the, endo the exocrine part of the pancreas is not what we are interested in today. What we are interested in today is this exo endocrine part of the pancreas. Throughout the pancreas, the ten percent of the pancreas is the endocrine tissue, and the rest, ninety percent, is the exocrine tissue. So we are only interested in our ten percent, which is the endocrine tissue. And the pancreas is described as an organ with a head, a tail. Sorry, the head, the head of the pancreas. And then the body of the pancreas. This is the body of the pancreas. And this is the tail of the pancreas. These are what we call the islets of Langian. These are the endocrine portions of the pancreas. They are the endocrine lang they are the egg they are the islets of Langian. What that is what we used to call them in the old days, but for now they are called pancreatic islets. But it's okay, you can call them the pancreatic islets of Langeans, that's okay, as long as you know what we are talking about. But nowadays we just tend to call them the pancreatic islets. If you want, you can put uh, islets of Langeans. That's okay, that's okay, it's fine. But we want to examine one of these portions, the pancreatic islets of Langian, we want to bring one more pancreatic islets of Langian and look at it in a little bit more detail so that we get an understanding of how glucose is maintained, regulated inside the body. So we get our islets of Langian, one of which is this one, the cell. And then these islets of Langian are made up of two types of cells. There is what we call the beta cells. They are the ones which are inside. These are the beta cells. They are represented with the letter B. Uh, this is beta. Beta cells. And then towards the outside of the cell is another type of cells called the alpha cells. So these are the alpha cells. This is the big letter alpha. They are the alpha cells. They are called the alpha cells. And it is only these two cells which are responsible in the regulation of blood sugar levels in the body, throughout the whole body. So, why are we doing this? Of course, we might remember that Diabetes is a metabolic uh, disease, and to deal with it, we are supposed to know how the blood sugar level is being regulated inside our body. So, we don't want the sugar levels to be high. That is called hyperglycemia. Again, we don't want the sugar levels to be low. That is hypoglycemia. But instead, we want it to be just at an even rate. 
we want it to be homeostatically controlled. And that is done by two hormones. And uh, these hormones are produced by these cells that we just talked about, the beta cells and the alpha cells. So when the blood sugar levels increases, rises up to a higher level, then that's detected by the beta cells. From the pancreas in the islets of Langhans, and then the beta cells are going to respond by producing or secreting an hormone called insulin. So the beta cells are going to produce an hormone insulin. And this is the one which will bring the blood sugar levels down. How is this regulated? Well, it's very important to know. So I'll just throw a couple of cells on the blood vessel and the blood going through so that we know how this is regulated. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of pictures that we're going to do here. So here we have the cell. And of course, which part of the cell needs uh, oxygen and glucose for it to, to, to function properly? Well, it's the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is the one which is going to need glucose. So this is the cell. And then they are perfused with blood vessels. So here we have the blood vessel. This is the cell. And of course the cells, they are made of what we call phospholipid bilayer. The cell membranes are made of phospholipid bilayer. This is one of the most important concepts when it comes to understanding of how glucose, uh, how glucose is being regulated in our body. So they are made of phospholipid bilayers. Phosphor. These are fatty, they are made of fats, phosphor, lipids. The cell membranes are made of phospholipids. So suppose we have glucose in our body, in our blood. You have eaten, you have eaten a lot of food and that carbohydrate or whatever food that you have been eating, they have been turned into sugar as they pass through the liver. The liver has converted them into its preferred one storage, which is sugar. And then it is increased in your body. So the body doesn't want that. And the pancreas, the body has noticed, the brain has noticed that there is a large amount of what? Glucose in your blood. So the brain will trigger the pancreas who causes to produce and the, the insulin hormone in the beta cells. And then the hormone Insulin hormone, what it will do is that it will come here in the blood and then it will take this uh, glucose inside the cell so that it is not remain in the blood. That's the concept. We don't want the blood to be hyperglycemic. Instead, we want it to be at a, an even rate. We don't want it to be low also. But in this time, the blood sugar level is very high. So, the pancreas has produced insulin in the beta cell. And then what insulin will do is that it will get the glucose from the blood and inside the body of the cell. Because it's the mitochondria which needs the glucose for it to function, right? So it is the combination. We need an insulin and an insulin receptor cells. It is the one that will bring the glucose transporter molecules outside the cell and get the glucose inside the mitochondria. So what happens is that, what I mean is that in each and every cell, there is what we call insulin receptor cells. The insulin receptor cells are going to be here. These are the ones which are going to combine together with insulin so that they can do what? They can open up a cell, they can make it. It's more like a key in the door. Any more than you can know, you can open the door without a key. You need both. You need a key and you need the lock for you to open the door. That's the same thing here. Just take an, an example of a door. You can't open the door without a key. You need a key. So issuing is more like a, a, a key. And then the receptor cells are more like the lock. So you need to open them so that you get interest to glucose. This is the same principle here. So, 
the insulin receptor cells are going to combine together with insulin in order to bring to bring glucose inside the cell. So this is how this is regulated at the normal rate. But the other thing that insulin will do is that it will package other amount of sugar and convert them into glycogen and then takes them to the liver for storage so that when you are angry at a later time there is another hormone which is going to bring back this uh, glycogen, stored glycogen back into the blood and then to go into the cells so that you can use it, you can carry on with your metabolic processes that is interesting. And then when the blood sugar levels are very low, that is called, of course, hypoglycemia. So when that happens, that is detected by the hormone rather by the cells in the pancreas, Ehlers-Danlos. These are the alpha cells. So in other words, it is important, I think it's important to, to mention that uh, the alpha cells are hypoglycemic detectors, really, because they are detecting our, our hypoglycemia. And then on the other hand, the beta cells are hyperglycemic detectors, because they are detecting hyperglycemia. So we are talking about hypoglycemia. The least hypoglycemia. And this is going to be detected by the alpha cells in the pancreas islet of Langeans. And one and when once it's detected, they are going to respond by producing an insulin and uh, sorry, an hormone called glucagon. And it's this glucagon that will bring the sugar levels to a higher amount, not hyperglycemia, but to a normal rate that is needed by the body. It is the glucagon hormone, produced in the pancreatic islets of Langeans in the pancreas. So this is going to increase the sugar level. Now what happens in diabetes type 1, diabetes mellitus type 1, these the, the beta cells is going to be complete destruction. There is what we call death by friendly fire. The body's own immunity is going to start attacking its beta cells and other cells. And then when the beta cells are attacked, they are completely eradicated. They will completely eradicate. That's going to cause diabetes type 1. Can you see that when we don't have uh, production of insulin, there is no insulin here, and then there is high sugar levels in the body. But we don't have insulin, there is no insulin produced, it's all gone because of the autoimmunity. That's why type 1 diabetes is as a result of all an, an autoimmunity. See? An autoimmunity. The body's own immunity starts attacking its body cells, and in this case, the beta cells. Then, if this this is not produced, then we are not going to have insulin, and then we are going to have a large amount of urine, sorry, uh, glucose in the body, in the blood, and this can go even up to the urine. It can even reach up to renal threshold, which is supposed to be 11 millimoles of glucose. It can even go further. Maybe it could be 20 millimoles of glucose, which is going to be found in the urine. And when that happens, then there is diabetes mellitus, because it's going to be sugar in urine. So it's as a result of this. Type 2, type 2 is primarily for the insulin receptor cells. Quite, yeah, that's quite different. They are opposite, but they are presenting with the same clinical signs and symptoms. But the only difference is that type 1 diabetes can present at a shorter rate, and the type 2 can present after a very long time ago with the clinical signs and symptoms. But all of them, they are going to present you with the same signs and, uh, clinical signs and symptoms. But let's see now what happens if there is an increased, let's say, clinical signs and symptoms in diabetes, because this is our pathophysiology, and then this 
but those are clouds by clinical signs in diabetes. So let's see what happens when there is an increase in blood sugar level and when there is a reduction in blood sugar level. Thank you.